Thank you. There's a problem that I believe we don't speak about as much as we should. And the problem is breast and ovarian cancer caused by mutations in the BRCA gene, BRCA gene, which lies on chromosome 17. Over the next 18 slides, I'd like to show you what I believe we should be doing. First, we have to understand the nature of the scope of the problem. The BRCA gene mutation is inherited uh, in a dominant fashion, uh, which means that if one of your parents has the mutation, you have about 50% chance of passing it on, or of inheriting it from them. Um, and it really does confer a very severe disease burden. At the age of 80, the risk is about, uh, at the age of 60, the uh, risk is about 60%. At the age of 80, the risk of cancer is about 80%. Um, what does the BRCA gene do? Well, think about it a bit um, like a pit stop in a Formula One race. In the cell cycle where one cell becomes two cells, uh, it, it checks uh, like a spell check for errors. Any error, like a misplaced screw, might cause the car to career out of control. And it's worth saying as well that men have the BRCA mutation in equal rates to women, and it triples the risk of prostate <coughs> cancer. Now, in the general population, the BRCA gene is quite rare. Um, in 1,000 people, um, there will be about two individuals with a faulty gene. And that perhaps goes some way to explain why it is that we don't have bracket testing offered as standard. It would simply be too costly. However, in the Jewish um, population, um, the rate of mutations is um, 10 times higher, affecting about 1 in 40. That means that in 1,000 individuals, there will be about 25 people, each with an 80% lifetime risk of cancer. Why is this? Well, interestingly, it is a consequence of Jewish history um, because um, Jewish communities to some extent chose and some extent were forced uh, to live separately. And because of that, the genetic variation was less than other ethnic groups. This is true for Ashkenazi Jewish people, but in many cases it is also true for Sephardi and Mizrahi communities. For a long time we thought that this was an Ashkenazi problem, uh, in fact, there are genetic mutation lines found now in North Africa, Iraq, Iran, and Jewish communities in Afghanistan. And the reason for this is that the general population has a great deal of genetic variability, um, whereas in close-knit, non-integrated Jewish communities, certainly throughout history, um, there's a, a higher chance that a faulty founder mutation will stay in the gene pool over time. What can we do about this picture? Well, at the moment, there's an intense research effort uh, around the world to diagnose BRCA based on the blood test, to better develop risk prediction uh, and treatment, and even to um, develop ways in which we can protect people with the BRCA mutation through something like a BRCA vaccine. Of course, being diagnosed with the mutation is, is very different from being diagnosed with cancer. We often speak about fighting cancer, beating it, uh, the battle with cancer. But when we talk about the mutation, we're actually, um, we, we are actually, we need a new language. Um, we need to talk, talk in terms of what we can fix. Um, it's also important to remember how this impacts on a person's life. Uh, it can be very profound the way they have to make decisions about risk-reducing surgery, uh, which alters their ability to have children and their hormonal profile. Around each person uh, stands a family as well. And if you get tested, uh, their risk actually changes. If you test positive, their risk changes from 1 in 40 to 1 in 2. So many people uh, say they don't want to get tested because they're worried how the, it will impact their daughters, their mothers, their sisters. And outside of that, there is the community uh, at large um, who are impacted by issues such as um, risk, prediction, confidentiality, and law. And these questions are really too big for just one individual to deal with. And the problem is that at the moment, um, uh, people who um, currently are disease-free but have received a genetic diagnosis basically fall between two stools. The medical community is set up to deal with cancer, which they don't have, and the charities are set up to deal with cancer survivors. And these people often feel too guilty even to ask. So I believe the time has come to tackle this in the spirit of collaboration, 
let's come together and set up a collaborative between individuals with BRCA mutations and the clinical research community, something like the BRCA Alliance. To make this happen, uh, we need your advice, your support, um, and your passion. We've already had a dozen doctors uh, and researchers that are willing to be part of it, and together we can make the agony of being a BRCA mutation carrier more bearable for them, but also for the whole community. Thank you.